Dr. ACR Academy. In this video we will discuss about what is posology and what are the factors that affects posology. We will discuss it in detail. We frequently hear that the rigidly fixed amount of medicine should not be given to all people ranging from kids to old. The science behind this statement is to reach the expected medical benefit by avoiding potentially dangerous side effects. The branch of medical sciences that deals with dose or amount of drugs required to be given to a patient to get the desired pharmacological effects is the posology. The word originated from the Greek posos means how much and logos means science. The objective of the posology is to deliver the precise amount of the drug is to attain the maximum outcome without any side effects. As per the official pharmacopoeia, the dose represents the average range of an active agent that is suitable for an adult that is administered orally within 24 hours. Even though prescriber takes the main responsibility of the dose, the pharmacist must check the dosage from the official sources. Now let us look at the various factors that influence the dosage of the drug include Age, gender, body weight, emotional conditions, time of administrations, presence of diseases, environmental conditions, formulation of the drug, interactions between the drugs, and rate of elimination of the drug from the body plays a vital role in dose calculations. Let us start with the age. The beneficial PHARMACO kinetics results of many drugs vary with age due to the differences in physiology compared to young or old age and or organ system consequentially altering the effectiveness and toxicity of almost any drug. The rate of elimination is lower in children and old people in contract to the adult therefore, they need a minor quantity of the drug. Children can tolerate higher doses of drugs than adults like belladonna, digitalis and ethanol. Likewise, certain drugs produce more confusion state in adults with hypnotics and tranquilizers. Next, gender is the another important factor that influence the amount of doses to be calculated precisely. Women tend to behave differently with the drugs due to the exclusion during clinical trials as part of well-meaning differences in the metabolic conditions of the liver, the accumulation drugs in the fat cells, and the specific conditions under pregnancy, menstruation, and lactation. Special care must be taken while prescribing medicine to the women during the pregnancy, menstruation, and lactation period, otherwise, the drug may cause harmful effects. The drugs that must be avoided during pregnancy include strong purgatives like aloes and the drugs that stimulate uterine smooth muscles like drastic purgatives, anti-malarial drugs and ergot alkaloids that may cause birth defects and the drugs that cross the placenta like alcohol, barbiturates, narcotics and non-narcotic analgesics also to be avoided as they cause harm by interfering with normal fetal development and by damaging the baby's organs. Most medicines are safe to take while breastfeeding. However, some medicines like antihistamines, morphine and tetracyclines, antibiotics should be avoided as they can enter the breast milk and can affect the baby. Unquestionably body weight is another key factor that defines the average dose to be given. Usually, the dose averages are measured in terms of milligram per kilogram body weight or as a total single dose for an adult weighing between 50 to 100 kgs but this is not applicable. In the obese persons, thin children and malnourished patients where it is calculated based on body weight. Time of administration is also an equally important factor to be considered while measuring the amount of the drug. Some medicines need to be taken before food or on an empty stomach to avoid the interference of food and some drinks that affect the normal absorption and functioning of the medicines. Hence lesser amount of medicine may be sufficient to work effectively if taken before the meal. Certain irritating drugs like iron, arsenic and cod liver oil better to take after the meal for effective result. 
Next move on to another important factor. Daylight serves as a natural stimulant to magnify the impact of several drugs and also reduces the effect of some drugs like hypnotics. In contrast, the darkness raises specific drugs like hypnotics, less amount of barbiturate is sufficient to produce sound sleep in the night, when compared to daylight. Likewise, alcohol is well tolerated in a cold environment than in summer. Similarly, emotional factors are other notable factors that determine the quantity of the drug. The personality and behavior of a physician may influence the effect of drug during the treatment of the psychosomatic disorders. Usually, females are more emotional than males and require a lesser amount of some drugs, even placebos. The inert materials that are similar to the medicament is enough to elicit a therapeutic benefit in angina pectoris and bronchial asthma. Or, presence of disease may modify the standard functions of a drug by either improving or diminishing its normal way of functioning. Low doses of the depressant drugs like barbiturates and the psychotic drug chlorpromazine showed an extended efficacy in patients with liver cirrhosis. High levels of antipyretics are tolerated by patients with fever compared to the normal state. Streptomycin usually removed by the kidney and repeated administration of a regular amount of streptomycin can lead to toxic effect during kidney failure in the patients. Similarly, another important factor that influence the dosage is the accumulation. Repeated administration of slowly excreted drugs may lead to accumulation when the drug is administered before the previous dose is completely eliminated. The accumulative effect occurs as a result of its slow excretion, slow degradation and rapid absorption of drugs in the body. This accumulative effect is usually common in patients with long-term administration of drugs like digitalis, amatine and heavy metals. Rarely this accumulative effect is desired to treat some diseases like epilepsy with phenobarbitone. Next is the additive effect that affects the dosage of a medicine. Many serious diseases like metabolic diseases and cancers can be effectively cured by directing multiple drugs at multiple targets. That gives the greatest therapeutic benefit while minimizing toxic side effects. An additive effect is that the effect of all the combined drugs is equal to the sum of the effect of each agent given alone, that reduces the number of administrations of the drugs and improved clinical efficacy. Let us move on to the next important factor, that's synergism. During the treatment of complex diseases like cancers, infections, pain, treatment, is higher than that predicted by Abel's the use of lower doses and may lessen adverse results. For example, combinational therapy of procaine and adrenaline will considerably increase the duration of activity procaine, used as local anesthetic agent. Next another important factor is the antagonism. The antagonism is a drug opposition interaction among two or more drugs that have opposite impacts on the body. Drug antagonism may block or reduce the effectiveness of one or more of the drugs. This property is highly valuable in the treatment of poisoning. For instance, the alkaline effect of milk of magnesia neutralize the effect of acid poisoning. When adrenaline and acetylcholine are given together, they neutralize the activity of each other due to antagonism, because adrenaline is a vasoconstrictor and acetylcholine is a vasodilator. Idiosyncrasy, otherwise known as drug allergy, is an abnormal physical reaction by an individual to a drug. Idiosyncratic drug responses are an important reason for morbidity and mortality for patients in some cases. 
For instance, a small amount of aspirin may cause gastric hemorrhage and quinine may cause ringing in the ears. Furthermore, penicillin and sulfonamide may create severe toxic symptoms in some people. Next important factor is the tolerance. Tolerance is defined as the reduced response to drugs for repeated or prolonged exposure. Tolerance is defined as the reduced response to drugs for repeated or prolonged exposure. As a result, a larger amount of drug is necessary to obtain the normal efficacy of the drug. For example, smokers can tolerate a large quantity of nicotine, an alcoholic can tolerate a large quantity of alcohol. Tolerance might be true tolerance which is produced by oral and parental administration of the drug and pseudo-tolerance which is provided only to the oral route of administration. Tolerance to drugs usually takes some time to develop, on the other hand, tolerance may appear within a few minutes after administration of certain drugs, this phenomenon is known as tachyphylaxis or acute tolerance. It is due to the blocking of the receptors specific to that drug, hence the process is not even reversed by giving higher amount of the drug. For instance, ephedrine given in repeated doses at short intervals in the treatment of bronchial asthma may produce very less response immediately after the initial doses itself. Similarly, amphetamine, cocaine and nitrates may produce fewer responses when doses are given repeatedly at short intervals of time. Let us move to the metabolic disorders. The metabolic disorders are the abnormal chemical responses in the body that interrupt the regular metabolic processes. So that the body may have too much of some substances or too little of other ones that we need to stay healthy. Ellipsis. For example, changes in water electrolyte balance, acid balance, body temperature and other physiological factors. These factors may significantly alter the normal metabolism of the drug. For instance, salicylates reduce body temperature, only in case of elevated body temperatures. Similarly, the absorption of iron from git is maximum under iron deficiency anemia. Next, let us move on to the pivotal side of the pathology, that is the method of calculating the correct amount of the drugs to be dispensed to the patient. As said earlier, the dosage is defined as that the average range of an active agent that is suitable for an adult measured in terms of milligram per kilogram body weight or as a total single dose for an adult weighing between 50 to 100 kg is administered orally within 24 hours. However, various factors like age, gender, route of administration, disease condition and many other factors need to be considered to dispense the accurate amount of the drug to the patient. Before giving medicine to the child we must be assured that the dose is correct. For better efficacy of the drug, dosages are commonly calculated based on the child's age and weight. The primary methods for calculation of medication dosages based on children age are the Young's Rule and the Dillings Formula. Young's Rule is an equation used to estimate pediatric medication dosage based on the age of the patient from the known recommended adult dose. The definition of Young's Rule is the age of the patient divided by the age added to 12, or multiplied by the prescribed adult dose. This formula looks below. Age age plus 12 x recommended adult dose equals pediatric dose. Young's rule can be applied to quickly approach a situation in which the patient's weight is unknown, who is under 12 years of age. Another easier and quick method used to calculate the doses of under 12 years is the Dillings formula. The definition of Dillings rule is the age of the patient divided by 20, or multiplied by the prescribed adult dose. This formula looks below. Age in years, 20, x recommended adult dose equals pediatric dose. Now move on to the method of calculating dosage based on weight of the body. 
Clark's formula is an equation applied to measure pediatric medication dosage based on the known weight of a patient and a known adult dose of medicine to be used. Clark's rule equation is defined as the weight of the patient in kgs divided by the average standard weight of 70 multiplied by the adult dose of a drug equals the pediatric medication dose, as is demonstrated below. Weight asterisk divided by 70 kgs. X adult dose equals pediatric dosage. Clark's rule is one of the well-known pediatric medication dosing laws specified in the medical history that uses the patient's weight to calculate medication dosage. Other vital factor that influence the dosage is body surface area of the patient. Estimation of child dose based on body surface area BSA is more adequate and relevant rather than other dosage methods. The method is defined as the BSA of the child divided by the BSA of the adult multiplied by 100. Body surface area is measured from the height and weight of the child. It is strongly advised to refer the reference book before prescribing the drug to the children as per the shown table. Similarly, we must consider multiple factors while prescribing drugs to the animals also. Let us see the factors to be considered. Being a pharmacist, it is important to have relevant knowledge of pathology which concerns animal medication also to dispense the correct drug. While calculating the dosage for animals, it needs to be focused on its heavier body weight and its larger body surface area. And the dosages are normally determined based on body weights of the animal. As the young animals are more susceptible to drug, they need lesser dose of the medicament. Gender is another distinguishing factor that defines the quantity of the drug. Usually, females require a lesser amount of drugs and extra care must be taken while prescribing the drugs to the pregnant and lactation animals as they cause abortion and secretions into the milk respectively. Different weights of different breeds of the same species and different animals must be considered while prescribing the drugs. The fixed amount of drug cannot be prescribed to all breeds of the dogs and different animals of varying sizes. The fixed amount of drug cannot be prescribed to all breeds of the dogs and amount of drug to be dispensed depends on the time of administration also. The right amount for one breed may be toxic to another breed of the same species itself due to variations in the body sizes. In the case of purgatives and anthemintics, small amount of drug is sufficient when given with empty stomach. Ellipsis. Hypnotics are more effective when given after the sunset. Indeed, dosage of the same drug varies with different routes of administrations. Especially, the maximum dose is needed for oral route and the minimum dose is needed when delivered through the intravenously. Amount of drugs required is Oral greater than SC greater than IM greater than Oral greater than SC greater than IM greater than IM Furthermore, environmental conditions also performs a vital role in determining the amount of drug to be dispensed. For instance, less doses required under the cool and quite humid climate. Need more when the climate is dry and cold. Animals that constantly expose the drug may need more drugs to attain the efficacy than animals that do not expose. The drugs that are excreted at a quicker rate may require larger doses than the drugs that eliminate moderately. When two or more drugs are administered in a combinational multi-targeted therapy, the effect of drugs may improve or decline by the other counterparts due to their interactions. Even the purpose of medication also defines the quantity of the drug to be given. For example, giving magnesium sulfate in higher amount may act as purgative and for example, giving magnesium sulfate in higher amount may act as purgative and 
Another factor is the type of species. Due to the change in anatomical and physiological variations, the dose of drug changes from species to species. Being a narcotic, opium produces excitement in horses and cattle, but shows narcosis in the dog. Finally, the physical form of the drug also plays a critical role in calculating the dosage. In Nux Vomica, a more quantity of drugs must be required when given as crude powder but a small quantity is sufficient as an active form. To summaries, many factors like age, gender, type of formulation, environmental factors and elimination of the drug needs to be considered.